Welcome back to Paul's Tech News. Each week, the tech world is inundated with a flood of exaggerated and overhyped stories that range from overblown puffery to outright lies, all coordinated by the so-called mainstream tech media so they can be foisted upon you, the unsuspecting viewer, in an attempt to whip up some anger or fear and keep those eyeballs glued to the screen. It's enough to make you angry or fearful even, but where should you turn if you just want a concise summary of the most relevant stuff that happened in the past week, like AMD having an AMD 5 Plus platform and then not, or Intel having their CPUs not work for gaming anymore. Well, good news, you don't have to turn anywhere. No turning is required because I have also just been concisely summarizing this show where you can be assured that the only thing I'll be foisting upon you is the tech news. Excellent. Today's video is brought to you by Lexar's NM790 NVMe SSDs, providing lightning fast storage for the latest generation of gaming and workstation PCs. Featuring a high bandwidth PCIe Gen 4x4 interface, broad compatibility thanks to the M.2 2280 form factor, and capacities up to 4 terabytes with sequential read speeds up to 7400 megabytes per second, the NM790 makes no compromises and is conveniently available with or without an integrated heatsink. It's also a perfect pairing for Lexar's stable, reliable, and efficient Thor OC DDR5 memory kits too, so click the sponsor link in the description for more. Intel is in a bit of hot water this week, but if you ask me, the temperature has been rising for quite some time. It only just reached boiling point though, and as a result, Intel is now officially investigating gaming stability issues with their 13th and 14th gen Raptor Lake CPUs. It is a problem that is as vague as it is frustrating, but as time has passed, one thing has become clear. Intel 13th and 14th gen CPUs seem to be more prone to errors and crashes while gaming than other CPUs. The most common seems to be an out of video memory error message that occurs across a range of games, typically those based on Unreal Engine. Intel's official response came after ZDNet Korea posted an article on the subject on Monday. Apparently one of the three main retailers in Korea handles about 10 Intel CPU returns every day, with most reporting gaming problems to be the reason for the return. And while Intel's comments are the pretty standard, we are aware of the issue and are investigating it, for now, the fact that they have commented publicly is an indication that the CPUs aren't just malfunctioning at typical rates and that something is awry that requires further looking into. As of Friday, Nvidia has joined the investigation as well, with recent driver release notes requesting that Raptor Lake CPU owners report their problems, not to Nvidia, that would imply that Team Green is somehow culpable as well, but to Intel via an issue tracking report page. One of the most frustrating aspects of the situation is that users with previously stated stable systems have reported errors cropping up months down the line. So what should you do if you're running an Intel 13th or 14th gen CPU? Well, you can wait as there is a chance Intel figures out a fix that can be distributed via a microcode update, which would be distributed via a new BIOS. Or you could consider what is likely the cause of this whole situation, motherboards. And no, I'm not saying motherboard manufacturers are to blame. If my theory is correct, Intel is to blame for this because they do not lock down motherboard manufacturers into using sensible default settings. It seems like almost every 600 or 700 Z series motherboard has some UEFI based manufacturer OC or crazy voltage curve designed to get a few extra clock cycles out of the CPU at the expense of heat, power draw, and of course, long-term stability. So no, I don't think there will be a one-shot BIOS update solution to Intel's problem because if board-to-board -board variants is what's at fault, there are far too many already in the wild to get a handle on. The true answer lies in the future. And fortunately, the future for Intel is right on the horizon. No, not, not Ryzen, horizon. That was, that was a poor choice of words. But the next gen platform for Intel has fittingly made its debut this week, as this LGA 1851 motherboard smiled for computerbase.de's cameras at Embedded World 2024 in Nuremberg, Germany. No, it wasn't shown by Asus, MSI, or Gigabyte, but rather Taiwanese company iBase, who had a demo of their MI1002 Mini ITX board made for embedded computing solutions, while still rocking a socketed CPU. We're expecting a new lineup of 800 series motherboards with this socket to debut later this year alongside Intel's Arrow Lake S desktop CPUs, which, according to rumor, will be called Intel Core and Core Ultra 200 and 300 series processors. Fortunately, the socket size and cooler mounting points are the same, so existing CPU coolers will still fit on LGA 1851 CPUs, but let's hope they do a bit of reinforcing under the frame this time so enthusiasts don't have to rely on anti-bending brackets if they want good contact with their 
cold plate like they did with LGA 1700. Intel's new desktop line should launch later this year in Q3 or Q4. There was a dubious AMD rumor floating around for the past week about a new AM5 Plus platform. A bit surprising if true because AM5 non plus is still relatively fresh and AMD has built a reputation on socket longevity and upgrade pathiness with their past two platforms. Thankfully, this rumor was just that, a rumor, and an update by Plato Mavropoulos, which is an awesome name, has put it to bed. Plato is a developer for the MC Extractor tool, which is distributed on GitHub, and it was the patch notes for this very tool that spawned AM5 Plus articles by Tom's Hardware and other outlets. Long story short, the patch notes said the dev team adjusted AMD microcode pattern for AM5 Plus, by which Plato says they meant AM5 and newer and future platforms. Of course, techies immediately thought it was a specific new platform since historically there was an AM3 Plus socket that launched back in 2009. So don't worry AM5 early adopters, you won't need to upgrade your motherboard to get the most out of your Ryzen 9 9950X 3D for now, as far as we know, fingers crossed. What will be coming out from AMD later this year though is Zen 5 CPUs and later might be sooner based on how rumors are shaping up. Last week, one motherboard vendor at least, Asus, began to publish beta BIOS updates for existing AM5 motherboards that include the 1170 Fire Range Pi Ajisa, the first in the wild to support Granite Ridge CPUs, aka Next Gen Zen 5 desktop processors. AMD also has their CEO, Dr. Lisa Su, lined up for a Computex keynote presentation on June 3rd, so it's looking like pieces are falling into place for a summertime CPU benchmarking party at my place. Good thing I got the new AC unit installed. And we already talked about Intel's ongoing problems in today's episode, but if AMD beats them to the punch with this launch by a few months, well, that's another big problem for Team Blue. Speaking of problems that need solving, I sense that I have limited time to finish this video and several more stories to cover. Time to switch over to Tech Briefs mode. SSD pricing has been on the upswing since late 2023, and it seems like flash storage manufacturers are looking for any excuse to continue raising prices. For instance, last week there was a big earthquake in Taiwan. Notably, Taiwan-based TSMC said they were able to get back to work the next day. But as a result of that earthquake in Taiwan, companies like Samsung and SK Hynix, whose fabs notably are in Korea and mainland China, have stopped publishing contract DRAM prices, an almost sure sign that more price hikes are on the way. I guess they just felt bad for the people of Taiwan, and the only solution was to make themselves more money. PCI Express 7.0 is on track, according to reports, so stop feeling so smug about your PC's PCIe Gen 5 support. Traditionally, PCIe generations double bandwidth each time, making Gen 7 four times as bandwidthy as Gen 5, capable of a 128 giga transfer per second raw bitrate and up to 512 gigabytes per second bidirectionally via the full size by 16 configuration. Practically speaking, that could mean SSDs with 60 gigabytes per second transfer rates, meaning that picture of your mom could be copied in well under an hour. They've released version 0.5 as development continues, it's supposed to be finalized in 2025, and devices supporting the standard are expected in 2026 or 2027. Finally, I know it's been a while since it's seen any use, but the people of San Francisco need your five and a quarter inch floppy stat, and not for the usual reason either. You see, the San Francisco Municipal Transportation Agency or Safumta uses three five and a quarter inch floppy disks every day to run San Fran's Muni Metro Light Rail, a tradition that dates back to 1998 when the state of the art system was first installed. And sure, they're long overdue for an upgrade, but don't worry because that's already in the works as of 2018. Should be done by 2030, or about as long as it takes to copy all the metro data needed at five and a quarter inch floppy speeds. But more to the point, for anyone with old PC hardware lying around, remember that just because it's a decade or two old doesn't mean it's reached the end of its useful life. Your old DVD-ROM drive could power a futuristic metropolitan monorail system one day. Who knows? That is why I have so much PC hardware lying around in my garage, so stop pestering me. I'm putting it all away eventually. But there you have it guys, tech news for the week, and if you liked it, click that like button or leave me a comment down below. While you're down there, all the articles I talked about today are linked in the video's description if you're interested, and you can check out my store at paulshardware.net for high quality merchandise, t-shirts, hoodies, beer sets, and more. Subscribing to my channel is always a good call too. Thanks again everyone, and we'll see you next week.